Hey, how's it going guys? I hope that this video finds you well as always. Um, in this video, we are going to be talking about uh, dihybrid crosses, okay? So the content objective for this topic is to be able to predict possible outcomes of various genetic combinations such as dihybrid Mendelian crosses. And so far we have been talking about what is called Mendelian genetics, okay? So this is the idea that you have uh, dominant traits versus a recessive trait okay so so far we're talking about uh, some traits are dominant uh, like the color of uh, um, eyes brown color can be dominant over uh, a lighter color such as blue so the dominant allele will be always um, shown or expressed in a phenotype so this is the idea of mendelian genetics now we've only talked about one trait so far and that's what we learn with the Punnett squares, but in today's video, we're going to learn about dihybrid cross, which is a little bit different. So, the essential question is going to be uh, Can I predict possible outcomes of dihybrid crosses using Punnett squares? Okay, so we're going to learn how to use those Punnett squares to predict possible outcomes uh, of dihybrid crosses. We're going to learn what dihybrid means in today's video as well. So, uh, what is di a dihybrid cross? Let's just jump right into it. A dihybrid cross is a, a cross that involves two different traits. So, uh, for example, if you have a cat and uh, a cat has two different traits, like a trait for uh, the color of the cat and the trait for the length of its tail, well, those are two different traits. The cat can either be white or brown and it can have either a short tail or a long tail. So those are two separate traits uh, that can have uh, various possibilities. So it says here that two traits are uh, visualized or seen at the same time. Make sure that you write that down. Uh, for example, fur color and tail length in cats. So what is this going to do for us? This is going to uh, have four different alleles and those alleles were allow for 16 possible combinations of alleles so so far we have been talking about uh two alleles and those two alleles allow for four possible combinations this is why we have so far used the four boxes uh, and that allows for four and uh, one two three and four possible combinations however now since we're going to be talking about four different alleles that's going to allow for 16 possible combinations which means that we're going to be using 16 squares all right um so this is kind of like what it's going to look like we're going to have a little bit more information here and you're going to see that now we're going to be using 16 squares rather than the typical four so when we do two traits it can be uh for this example, the color of the fur or and the length of the uh, tail, that is talking about two specific traits. So we're going to be using 16 squares for those examples. Uh, now, the example that we're going to use, uh, and we're going to work on this one together, is the examples of these little birds called parakeets. Okay, so these are little birds that uh, come in different shapes and different sizes, uh, sometimes they have different colors too. Uh, something interesting about them is that you can get them at any, every typical uh, pet store like um, uh, Petsmart or uh, Petco and they all have these different traits in them. For example, the color of their um, feathers can be different from one another. Like some of them can be yellow based and green and some of them can be blue and white. And sometimes they can have these spots on them as well uh, while others do not have any spots. So the two traits that we're going to be looking at are the traits for the color of the bird and whether they have spots or not. Okay, so we're going to represent uh, yellow with a capital B because this is going to be dominant. We're going to be representing the color white with a white base wing. So this is going to be lowercase b. Um, if it is spotted, meaning it has those little black spots on them, that is a capital C for the dominant trait. And then if it is clear wing like this one, that means that it's going to be lowercase c uh, for clear wings. Now, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you uh, understand the two, the two different traits. This is step one. So you need to understand what happens when you have a homozygous dominant 
a heterozygous and a homozygous recessive uh, alleles. And for trait number two, you also need to understand the same thing. What happens if you have big C, big C? What happens if you have big C, little c? And what happens if you have little c, little c? All right. So if it is big B, big B, you understand that this is going to be yellow base. If it is big B, little b, or heterozygous, that is also yellow base since the dominant allele is present. And the last one, you know that little b, little b is the only way that the bird will have Y wings, okay? Having the two recessive alleles. Now, if it is homozygous dominant, you have to know that this is going to be spotted. Uh, a heterozygous will also be spotted. And a bird that is little c, little c will be clear wings or no spots on them, such as this one on the picture, okay? So please keep those things in mind. That's going to be important for the end product. Now, the first step that we're going to do when we figure out these, uh, these problems, okay? You have to do what we're going to call the uh, FOIL method, okay? And you're going to be using the FOIL method a whole lot. What this means is first, outside, inside, and last. And you're going to be doing those with these alleles because you have to... Uh, pretty much combine the alleles into separate gametes. And this is how we're going to be doing this, okay? So the first ones are gonna be big B and big C. Then outsides are going to be the two alleles on the outsides, the big B and the little c. Then you have the insides for the I, so the two on the inside. And last but not least, you have the last alleles, which is little b little c. So uh, again, you have to remember how to do the FOIL in order to separate the possibilities that you're going to have. And this is what they're going to look like. Okay. So uh, the next step is going to be to put them in on the uh, table. So you're going to have to draw 16 squares four by four. All right. And you, one thing that is important to mention here is that you're going to have to do this for both of the um, uh, of the parents. So let's say that you're crossing this parent right here with this parent right here of the F1 generation. If you're crossing those two, you have to do the same for both of them. So basically you have to do the, the FOIL. And let me go back again. You have to do the FOIL method for this one. And that's going to go on one side of the square. And then you do the FOIL method for that one. And that will go on the other side of the square. So if you have the 16 square boxes here, think missing one line there so if you have the 16 square boxes uh, the combinations for this one will go on maybe on the top and then the combinations for those will go on the side right there okay and keep in mind you also have to do first which is big B big C then you do outsides then you do insides and last but not least you do last okay so we're going to make sure that we place those on our top as such. Make sure that you do this on your paper as well. And then you do the other parent on the side. So you're going to be big C, big B, big C, big B, little c, big B, uh, I'm sorry, little c, big C, and then little b, little c, and the same on the top. So the next step is to fill in your boxes. Now, you have to be very careful here very very careful and the way that you want to do this is you do the first two b's together and then you do the two c's together so it's going to look like this you're going to have big b big b then you're going to have big c big c you want to make sure that those b's stick together and those c's stick together as well okay so you're going to do the same for every single square that you have on those 16 squares all right so let's practice this we're going to uh Go over some of these together here. So if you have big B, big B, you want to make sure that your two Bs go together, those two. Then you have capital C first and then little c. Uh, for the next one, you have big B and little b. So here's the little b, here's the big B, and capital C, capital C. Uh, and the last one here is going to be uh, big B, little b, and big C, little c. All right, so you need to make sure that you always, 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 always put those Bs first, then you put the Cs, okay?
uh, and that goes the same for whatever other letter you're using. Make sure that you whatever you have on the on the left, you put in those two together first, and then what you have on the right, you put in those together as well. So here you're gonna go a little bit here now, big B, big B for those two, big C, little C, big B, big B, little C, little C. Um, then you have big B, little B, and big C, little C. And finally, big B, little B, little C, little C. And now here you have big B, little B, big C, big C, big B, little B, little C, big C, little C. Then you have little, little, big and big, little, um, little and big, little. Finally, you have this. And you just keep going here. No, it's a little bit of work, but you have to make sure that you do it as slowly and precise as possible. If I'm going a little too fast, make sure that you pause the video and you do it on your own so that you can practice with this example. Okay, little c, little c. So, what we can do with this information now, we can actually predict uh, how many of these birds are going to be yellow. Uh, with spots uh, or be yellow and have spotted wings we can predict how many ha are yellow and have clear wings how many are white and have spotted wings and how many are white with clear wings and the way we do this is we look at the traits for each of them so you have to figure out first how many of them are yellow okay so yellow you have remember to be yellow you have to be either big b little b or big b big b so this guy right here will be yellow. So I'm going to do a little symbol there. One, two, three. That's yellow as well. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is not yellow, so I'm going to skip it. Not yellow. This one is yellow. That's yellow. And then I'm going to skip those two that are not yellow as well. So these that are yellow, how many of them are spotted? So remember to, be ha to have spots. And let me just make sure that I write this down here, yellow. To be able to have spots, you need to have big C, big C, or big C, little c. So what we want to do is we want to count the, the ones that have spots. So here you have one that has spots. This one uh, has spots as well. That's two. This is three, four, five. No spots. Uh, six, no spots again. Seven, here. Eight, no spot. Uh, this is ha this one has spots, but it's not yellow, so I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna skip those four. Then I'm gonna come here. Yellow with spots again, and this one is not yellow with spots. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine that are going to be yellow and are going to have spots as well. So this is a nine out of 16 total squares. Then how many of those yellows are going to be clear? Well, you had a total of 12 that were yellow. Uh, now, if you had nine of those yellow having spotted, then that means that the other three are not going to be, uh, are gonna have clear wings. So white with spots, you have only these four that are white here. So out of those four, how many of those have spots? Well, this one has spots because big C, big C. So this is one white with spots, two white with spots, three white with spots. So you put that three there. And if you want to do the fractions, three out of 16 and three out of 16. Last but not least, you have white and clear. This is the only one that is white and clear. So one, and this will be one out of 16. If you wanted to ratio, very simple. Remember those numbers that we have at the beginning? 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 will be our ratio. So uh, make sure that you remember these steps. First step is figure out what traits you are talking about, the two traits. Remember that we're doing two traits. Second, make sure you do your FOIL method. Third, make sure that you fill in the boxes correctly. And then fourth, you can answer the questions that are asked in the um, the uh, um, in the test questions or whatever it is that you're answering. I'm going to stop here, guys. I hope that you found this information helpful, and I will see you on the next 
video. See you later.